chapter 24, they got back to the band shell just as they finished the last of the crimpets. Grayson looked at his watch. Guess it's time to quit the job I never did today. Time for dinner, too. Grayson was joking, but Maniac was serious when he piped, great, where to? Dumbfounded, the old man drove back out of the park to the nearest diner where he sat with a cup of coffee while the boy wolfed down meatloaf and gravy, mashed potatoes, zucchini, salad, and coconut custard pie. Grayson had a way of jumping into a subject without warning. It was during Maniac's dessert that he abruptly said, them black people, they ate mashed mashed potatoes too? Maniac thought he was kidding, then realized he wasn't. Sure, Miss Beale used to have potatoes a lot, mashed and every other way. Mrs. Who? Mrs. Beale, do you know the Beals of 728 Sycamore Street? The old man shook his head. Well, they were my family. I had a mother and father and a little brother and a sister and a sister my age and a dog, my own room too. Grayson stared out the diner window as if digesting this information. How about meatloaf? Huh? They eat that too? Sure, meatloaf too. And peas and corn, you name it. Cake? Maniac beamed. Oh man, you kidding? Miss Beale makes the best cakes in the world. Grayson's eyes narrowed. Toothbrushes? They use them? Maniac fought not to smile. Absolutely. We all had our toothbrushes hanging in the bathroom. I know that, said Grayson, Payson, but is theirs the same as ours? No difference that I could see. You didn't drink out of the same glass? Absolutely, we did. This information seemed to shock the old man. Maniac leaned down his fork. Grayson, they're just regular people like us. I was never in a house of theirs. Well, I'm telling you, it's the same. There's bathtubs and refrigerators and rugs and TVs and beds. Grayson was wagging his head. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? It was after dark when they got back to the baseball equipment room. The worm in Grayson's head had long since ceased to be a tiny tickle. And now it was a maddening itch. As with all such such itch worms, it would exit by only one route, the mouth. He said, uh, I was thinking, uh, maybe you want to come over to my place. This here floor is pretty hard. He tapped his foot to show how hard. The grizzled, gray old park hand could never know how much Maniac was tempted or how deeply the offer touched him. Neither could Maniac explain that the bad luck he always seemed to have with parents had led him to the conclusion that he'd better stick to himself. Uh, it's not so bad here, he said. Look. He lay down the chest protectors and closed his eyes. Ah, just like a mattress. I can feel myself dozing off already. And then, not wanting to hurt the old man's feelings, he quickly added, hey, I told you everything about me. How about you? He pulled Grayson's coat over himself. A bedtime story. Grayson snorted, story? I don't know no stories. Sure you do, maniac prodded. About yourself. You know about you. Everybody has a story. Not me. Grayson was edging for the door. I ain't got no story. I ain't nobody. I work at the park. You lie in baseball fields? Yep, I do that. You live at the Y. You drive the park pickup. You like butterscotch crimpets. Grayson shook his head. Not as much as you. I was just eating them to be friendly so as you wouldn't have to eat them all by yourself. And there's another thing about you, maniac joke. You're a liar. They both laughed. Grayson opened the door. Wait, called Maniac. What did you want to be when you were a kid? Grayson paused in the doorway. He looked out in the night. A baseball player, he said. He turned out the light and closed the door.